Welcome into the Fantasy Football Forge Saturday show update. The rankings, we're going to do that. And we will also look at my DFS lineup of the week at the end of the video. I will go over the quarterbacks, tight ends, uh, running backs, wide receivers. Once again, you know, update the rankings for each of those. There are bookmarks if you just want to look at one position or if you want to skip ahead to the DK rankings, if that's all you're here for. And of course, there is still some stuff that we don't know yet. So if any more information comes out um, or just, you know, my rankings might be changed by Sunday. So I am here live on YouTube with the rankings up on the screen that you can see here available for any start sick questions or if you just want to check out the rankings um, I'll be here three hours prior to kickoff of the main slate of the games this weekend um, if you missed I am going to have a schedule change next week for my videos because Thursday we're gonna have three games on Thanksgiving and I will be going live Thanksgiving morning at some point I am not a hundred percent sure yet forgot to figure out when I will be able to do that but I'm hoping to at least be here for two hours for you guys uh, to, to stop in, say hello, and uh, get any questions out of the way for next week. Before we get into updating the rankings, first of all, uh, let's do a little recap of the Thursday night game. Lots of things to cover there. I'll go over uh, three players and what the impacts of those are going forward. So obviously it was a yikes day for everybody, really. And we'll start off with the Mark Andrews injury. Of course, trades are a thing that you could look forward to in order to improve your tight end position if you are suddenly at a loss at it and you're going to have to stream going forward. And if you do look to trade, don't forget that guys like Trey McBride and Dalton Kincaid will have their starting partners coming back to the teams soon enough. Uh, so that could tank their value. Really not very startable. So uh, I wouldn't really make them my trade targets, but teams who have them on them, maybe the other uh, tight end would be a good tight end to target. Other than that, I think that TJ Hawkinson would be a good trade target. I will say you will probably have to overpay for him as I think that the return of Justin Jefferson will bring him down back down to earth by a little ways at the very least, but he is still a great option and should still see plenty of targets going forward. Travis Kelsey might be able to be had. He hasn't had the best of seasons. He's not, you know, as valuable as he's been in recent seasons. And Sam Laporta is a great target. Otherwise, I would just stream to the best of your ability going forward and, you know, watch my tight end videos, find out the best streamer, and go forward. I have Mark Andrews. I am pretty much planning on streaming. Then we're going to a little bit about Keaton Mitchell. I really don't care about the end results of the game and, and what Keaton Mitchell's fantasy output was. This was exactly what I wanted to see from him. I saw everything that I needed to see to get on board with Keaton Mitchell fully and have trust with him going forward to a certain extent at least. He overtook the Justice Hill role, which was what I was expecting, but still needed to see that a little bit. And I also wanted to see him get at least like 10 touches in the game. He got nine touches right right in there so that was excellent i think that he is playable going forward doesn't mean he's a must start by any means but uh he's definitely going to be a boomer bust playable option that i i give a thumbs up to so anybody who went out and got him i think that'll work out for you all right and joe burrow got injured he's out for the season as well and this just sucks for everyone i will say um just pulling up the uh, fantasy pros like rest of season rankings here you know, what does this do to Jamar Chase? To me, I think I would rather have DJ Moore. I don't know about Garrett Wilson, but that's right about the line for me. Like Michael Pittman Jr. almost feels like a, a tie, like the safer floor option compared to Jamar Chase, maybe between those two. But he'll probably be Garrett Wilson-esque. So borderline top 20 guy going forward, a high-end wide receiver too is probably what you're looking at. And then T. Higgins is already a ways down here um, in the in the rest of the season rankings, wide receiver 38. And I'm sure that it has to do with the fact that he's not healthy right now, etc. I feel like that's about like ahead of Gabe Davis still is probably about where I would rank him uh, rest of season. He's a flex option going forward, essentially is what it is. So now let's do the updates to the quarterback rankings and the first update that I have is going to come with Justin Herbert and I'm going to put him behind Josh Allen so really I'm moving Josh Allen up um, more than anything in here and this is why during the week uh, somebody made a trade for Josh Allen I didn't absolutely love the trade uh, this was Thursday uh, they were in the chat room brought up a trade to me I was a little hesitant on how much I like the trade but I always like to look at the optimism and things 
um, and, and look for what the good parts of a trade are, or, you know, just generally, that's what I like to do. And so to me, Josh Allen going forward rest of season, I think the biggest upside here is that they're going to be fighting for a playoff spot for the entirety of the rest of the year, which means that they should, and I almost certainly will. And I'm sure that the fighting spirit of Josh Allen will take hold and his rushing upside should be much better rest of season compared to where it's been. And that is so much of his value anyways. So I really do like Josh Allen rest of season. And I think it starts here against the New York Jets. And of course, Justin Herbert going up against Green Bay. It's just a really limiting matchup uh, that you, you do get a little bit concerned about. But uh, they just whooped up on another great defense like a couple of weeks ago, I want to say it was. So uh, that's why I'm not overly concerned about Justin Herbert. I do think that that offense could get over on the Green Bay Packers defense. Then I'm pretty comfortable with things for a little bit until we get to uh, Justin Fields and Josh Jobs is the first area. And I do feel better about Justin Fields than I did uh, originally when I made my rankings this season. So I was thinking about like trying to push him up. I have Kyler Murray and Justin Fields, and I do love the matchup for Justin Fields this week. But there is still that little bit of concern about how that's going to look with his thumb. Uh, is it going to affect his accuracy or not? And so I am still higher on Kyler Murray, so not going to be moving Justin Fields up. And at the end of the day, it's going to be the same thing for Josh Jobs. I think, I don't know, I, I was thinking about pushing him up ahead of Kyler Murray. And I just don't think I can do it with how Denver's defense has been playing as of late. So I am going to end up keeping Josh Jobs right where I have him here. I'm going to move him up ahead of Justin Fields. There we go. So for the rest of the week, Josh Dobbs, top 12 quarterback, just barely. Justin Fields just outside of that. And I don't think there's a whole lot more here. The other thing, Dorian Thompson Robinson was added to the rankings since last week. And I do like his mobility to give him a decent floor, at least. It's a tough matchup against Pittsburgh there. I know I'm covering up the defenses a little bit, but Bryce Young facing Dallas, Kenny Pickett, facing Cleveland, most notably are two defenses that really scare me, you know, more than Pittsburgh, at least. And Aiden O'Connell going up against Miami. Uh, should be throwing a lot. I'm going to put him up ahead of Bryce Young. Let's move on to the wide receivers, it looks like. Okay, so right off the bat, just want to point out, if you see this little asterisk next to anybody's name, that means that they are questionable going into the weekend as of Friday, 7 p.m., uh, let's go 6 p.m. just to be safe. They've been questionable. So Keenan Allen is dealing with an AC joint sprain. A little bit concerning, not overly concerning. We'll see how it impacts him this week. Um, it's not going to, I don't know, uh, does it change my rankings on him? Maybe a little bit. I'll be safe, and I would play him. Uh, I would play C.D. Lamb over him, so we'll just make that little move there. Another asterisk here next to Garrett Wilson. He said that he'll be playing, so he is fine. And the next guy I want to look at here is going to be Adam Thielen in at wide receiver 12 currently. And I think that I'm being a little too optimistic with him and how I ranked him. Going up against the Dallas defense, I don't know that I really noticed that when I was making the rankings. Or I was just, once again, being optimistic, overlooked it. So that does concern me. question is, how low do I want to go with him? So I look down a little ways, and would I play him over Jalen Waddell? Maybe? Would I play him over DK Metcalf? Probably. I'm going to give him one last chance based on what he did in a few games earlier this season and play him over Jalen Waddle for now in my rankings. It's definitely something that could change by the time we get to Sunday, but that's where I'm going to park him for now. Next up is going to be Devontae Adams, who I have at wide receiver 19. And as I was talking about with uh, Aiden O'Connell, I think that they're going to have to pass a lot, and Devontae Adams has received a remarkable amount of the target share from Aidan O'Connell. The ability to catch a lot of those passes is concerning. I brought that up in my original rankings, but still, it's such a high uh, floor amount of potential that I do think I'm under-ranking him a little bit. So I'm going to put him up ahead of Adam Thielen. There we go. There's my new updated top 18. And right behind that, I DK Metcalf, Devonta Smith. I really thought about flip-flopping these two. However, I am going to stick with the projections in part here because over the past couple of weeks, it really appears based on the amount of time back on the field for DK Metcalf that he has been quite a bit healthier and haven't really heard anything negative about his health this week. So I do think that he's getting healthier, is getting onto the field more. 
and I do like this matchup for him against the Rams. Don't really love the matchup there for Devonta Smith, so I am going to keep it in that order. And that brings us to Justin Jefferson. You know, I was, uh, I think I was hoping, thinking that the uh, probability of him playing this weekend was a little bit higher, or thinking that things would just look a little bit better throughout the week. I don't know, but we still don't know if he's going to play. It seems to be um, something we'll find out today on Saturday, or it's going to be a game time decision. Either way, it seems like he's definitely going to be limited if he plays to some extent. So with everything surrounding that, I am going to push him down behind Terry McLaurin and Puka Nakua. Terry McLaurin has been a giant slayer throughout the entirety of his career, and as far as Puka Nakua goes, I was more concerned about Matt Stafford early on in the week, but he's been like a full practice participant all week, so I have more confidence that his thumb's going to be all right than I did then, and thus I am uh, slightly optimistic about Puka this week going up against Seattle. Then we don't have to go far to find Chris Godwin, and I really like his floor a lot this week. I expect him to get targeted heavily due to a lot of pressure from the 49ers, not really being a Mike Evans game necessarily. So I am going to move him up ahead of Cortland Sutton, which brings us just one spot lower, if I could, uh, two spots lower, I suppose, there to Tyler Lockett in at wide receiver 26. And he is a game-time decision this week, so not looking too great. And if uh, JS, if that does happen, as far as JSN, my thoughts on him would be that the Los Angeles Rams are defensively pretty good against wide receivers, so that's not super, super exciting. But as I talked about uh, for DK Metcalf and liking him for the Rams matchup, they are a low completion, high yards per completion type of defense. And so that does favor DK Metcalf's play style compared to JSN's play style. But also we saw JSN do a Fairly good job with deep targets when he was in DK Metcalf's role uh, a few weeks back. And so at the end of the day, uh, looking at things, I think I would probably put JSN right here where I have Tyler Lockett currently because he would be on the field more than Tyler Lockett or JSN currently are. So, um, yeah, I like it. Let's move on a little ways down the rankings, all the way down here to my wide receiver 38, to Jaden Reed. And he is probably the most consistent wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. And the Los Angeles Chargers absolutely suck against the slot. So I am going to move him up just one spot here ahead of Gabe Davis, liking him uh, a fair bit this week. And that's going to bring us on to another uh, guy who, well, now we're into the territory. We're hopefully not having to play these guys. But I am going to move Elijah Moore down behind Rondale Moore, behind KJ Osborne. Wandale Robinson, Rondale Moore to my wide receiver 52 there. Um, he had his worst week of the season in week four, which is the week that DTR was in at quarterback. So that did not make me more optimistic about him. And the other one here is going to be Jamison Williams, who after his absolutely huge block, which if you haven't seen it, you should go look that up. Had a great block last week. He finally got some good raving reviews almost probably from his head coach so you love that going forward and so I'm still a little bit hesitant to play him but I think you know we could see a new Jamison Williams that's the kind of thing that can launch his career back onto the right path because it's been a rocky start for him and other than that I do like uh, where I have my wide receivers so we're going to move on to the running backs you can see these rankings all up on the website www.theffforge.com and here we are at the running backs. Uh, a few changes to make. So Devon A. Chain, I did not expect him to be limited by this Friday practice session when I originally ranked him. So I am going to drop him, and I'm going to drop him all the way down to behind Brees Hall. And I, for now, I'm keeping him ahead of DeAndre Swift, but that definitely might change. It's going to bring us just a couple of spots down from where I moved HN and brings us to Saquon Barkley. And I probably have him ranked at his ceiling. Uh, if I was really confident in him, I wouldn't mind doing that. But I'm not incredibly confident in him. So I'm going to drop him. And I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to keep him ahead of Ken Walker behind Tony Pollard. Uh, you know, Pollard should be able to have a great week this week. Saquon. It just comes down to the fact that he just gets a lot of work. All right, so I've dropped Saquon down. We're going to go back up here to Brian Robinson, who uh, I'm thinking about moving up. So Antonio Gibson has a toe injury. He is doubtful this week, and uh, the backup, Chris Rodriguez Jr., is more of a Brian Robinson-type back. So I don't know how much he 
takes of Antonio Gibson's role. So I'm expecting B-Rob to be on the field. I was already expecting him to have a good chance of being on the field more this week than maybe his average. But now I'm really expecting it, and it's a great matchup for him. So I'm going to move him up. And the question is, do I want to move him up all the way ahead of Brees Hall? And I ended up not doing that. I'm going to keep Brian Robinson right behind Brees Hall, and that is because I can't get week one out of my mind when Brees Hall gashed this Buffalo defense. And other running backs, mostly I think similar running back styles, have also gashed this Buffalo defense, and they're worse than they were at that point in time, and Brees Hall is healthier than he was at that point in time. Uh, His O-line still sucks. It sucked then. It's probably, it is worse now, so that doesn't help. But at the end of the day, I'm going for... I'd say a ceiling shot here in Brees Hall. Brian Robinson, I still don't fully trust that they'll run a whole lot more in this game, but uh, I'm pretty confident about it. Let's move on to David Montgomery, all the way down at running back 16. And I was pretty conservative when I ranked him. You look at even the projections are a little bit concerned about that floor, but I think I pretty much ranked him at his floor. And the thing is, I am still like fairly optimistic against him, against Chicago. Uh, if you're not aware, Chicago's very, very good against the run. But also, you're probably aware, Detroit's offensive line is very, very good at blocking for the run. And so it makes me think that I should probably go with my gut a little bit more on David Montgomery, not have him ranked so low. So we are going to move him up. I think we're going to bring him up ahead of Saquon Barkley. I had to think about that one. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough because we know Saquon's probably going to have more touches, but I don't know how much more valuable they will be. So that's going to bring us to uh, seven single, Devin Singletary here at running back 17. Already have him highlighted. And Damian Pierce returned to practice, so there's a little bit of concern there, but he has been ruled out, so that is absolutely great. We will keep Devin Singletary right here like him a fair bit this week, but I'm, you know, that running game has not been good outside of last week, so I'm still a little bit concerned about that bringing us down to Devontae Williams at running back 19. And I think I need to move him up at least ahead of Rashad White. And so that is what I have done. Here he is ahead of Rashad White. And the main thing for me is um, I like Rashad White's floor. I think he should get a good amount of receiving work against San Francisco. But I really don't like his uh, scoring prospects in that game, whereas Devontae Williams should have a much better chance of ending up in the end zone. So we will go that route. And that brings us to James Conner, who I'm going to move up ahead of Derrick Henry here by spot. And that is because Amari DiMarcado has been ruled out this week. And he was taking a fair bit of that third down work from James Conner. So um, they brought in Michael Carter this week, got him off of waivers from the New York Jets. Uh, He is a respectable running back, that's for sure. First week there, only been there for several days. I think that uh, there's a pretty good shot that James Conner will get a larger workload this week. And against Houston, I don't mind that at all. So I'm all aboard for James Conner. Could move him up even a little bit further by Sunday, maybe ahead of... You know what? I'm going to do that right now. We're going to move him up ahead of Rashad White as well. It's going to bring us to one of the last updates that I have, and that has to do with Ty Chandler, because it has been reported that Alexander Madison is supposed to pass the final concussion protocol today. Let me actually make sure there hasn't been an update on that. There has not been. So... I need to rank Madison, and we're going to need to push Ty Chandler down. This is very unfortunate. I thought Ty Chandler was pretty much a slam dunk, and I was ready to move him up in my rankings. But instead, we're going to have to move him down. So I do have, where are you? Alexander Madison down here, ready to go. I think I'm going to place him right where I have Ty Chandler right now. I do expect this to, like, before... Uh, the injury to Madison last week, we saw this turn into a bit of a split. And so I'm not uh, totally on board with Alexander Madison, and I'm not totally off the Ty Chandler board. This Denver matchup is one that actually fits Ty Chandler's running style better than it does um, Alexander Madison. So uh, that was 24. So we got to figure out, though, how far to push Ty Chandler back? Because I still think Alexander Madison's probably the starter. Would I play him over Kareem Hunt? Let's start there. I think that's where we're going to put him. We're going to put him one spot ahead of Khalil Herbert right now. Um, I just really do like the matchup for him. And I actually think I'm going to put Daryl Henderson um, above Alexander Madison just because of how high I still have Ty Chandler. 
All right, the last thing is that uh, Samaj P. Ryan was added to the injury report with an ankle injury on Friday, so that's obviously not a good sign for him. We'll give him a little asterisk. So if that um, does come through, he's not playing. That's going to get Jaleel McLaughlin onto the field more, almost certainly, and I do believe that he becomes playable somewhere in this same group. So he would be playable if that were to happen. Let's move on to the tight ends. And this should be pretty quick. Uh, so I, I have been thinking about putting Trey McBride over Sam Laporta all week. I just can't pull the trigger. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep it ranked like that. But it, it's incredibly close. Trey McBride's a real, real strong play this week. But what I am going to do, another thing I've been thinking about moving, was Cole Komet over Dalton Schultz. Cole Komet was a love him for me this week. And uh, I still really, really like that matchup for him. The upside, don't love the matchup for Dalton Schultz. Do like him. And do like the fact that I think that that's going to be a high-scoring game. But at the end of the day, for Cole Komet, it comes down to my gut feeling on the two of them. It comes down to the projections also having Cole Komet as the better option between the two of them. And the matchup, which I just talked about. So, yeah, other than that, um, Pat Fryermuth still questionable. We don't know about him. Gerald Everett has been ruled out. Same with Hayden Hurst. And uh, that is... The only changes that I had for my tight ends feel comfortable with them. So let's move on to my DFS uh, lineup of the week. I have not thought about this a whole lot. Come on. There we go. So let's figure this out. I'm just cheating and looking at my DFS buys that I recommended. So we'll start there. We'll, we'll get Brock Purdy out here, which means that we are certainly going to also get Brandon Ayuk into this lineup. Let's go on to our tight ends, our DST, figure out what we're doing there. So for the tight ends... Uh, something I forgot to mention, actually, is that uh, Donald Parham might be the number one tight end this week in the event. Uh, let's go back to that. I missed that. So Gerald Everett out means Donald Parham uh, needs to be moved up in my rankings. I did not end up doing that. Um, I did adjust his projections here, as you can see, which to me says that he should go right ahead of Tyler Higby and right behind Kay Dotton. So I don't see too many deals that I love. Logan Thomas, not too bad. Well, I mean, Cole Komet, you know, I just moved him up quite a ways in my rankings there, or he's pretty high in my rankings for 4,100. Let's do a little savings there. We'll get Cole Komet into this lineup, and let's figure out our DST this week. I mean, Pittsburgh at Cleveland feels quite juicy. I think we're going to do that, save a little bit there. I know I want some savings because I made some like all week lineups, Thursday to Friday lineups, and I, I was pushing to get as many guys as I wanted in there, especially with the running backs. It came uh, became a little bit tough. So my suggestions were Jameer Gibbs and Jerome Ford were two of the guys. So let's just start there and then move forward from there. Um, yeah. The only thing about Jerome Ford is I have the Steelers D. I don't know. You know what, DK is full PPR, and I do have a secret crush on Ty J Spears this week. Hate to double up on a guy that I'm playing in my real lineup, but um, let's try that out. We've got about 6K on average remaining, and I know I like DJ more this week, so we'll go that route. Does give us two Chicago guys, I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't love that. So actually, we're going to go uh, Marquise Brown instead. Full PPR once again. Should see more targets than he's seen as of late. And, you know, Terry McLaurin, uh, once again, a giant killer. Don't mind that at all. Let's see what that leaves us with for the flex. We could get Nico. I like him a lot. Tony Pollard. We could bet on that actually coming through. A-chan. I think that's what we'll do. We'll bet on A-chan there. It leaves us with 100 extra dollars, but there's the lineup. We got Brock Purdy matching up with Brandon Ayuk, Jameer Gibbs, Ty J. Spears, Marquise Brown, Ayuk again, Terry McLaurin, Cole Komet, Devon A-chan, and the Steelers D. S T. There we go. That is it. Thank you very much for tuning on in. I hope that uh, this lineup works. How did I do last week? We need to cover how I did last week. All right, I think this is the lineup that I gave you last week. I had Jared Goff, Christian McCaffrey, Jalen Warren, Monra St. Brown, Andre Yosevis, who apparently got injured in the game. So I feel like maybe that would have worked. Who knows? 
Kyle Phillips, Sam Laporta, TJ Hawkinson, and the Cowboys DST. Yeah, that's the lineup. So it just barely won in you know a mid-sized tournament. Um, got my money back and a little bit more. It was a, a pretty good lineup. Scored 158 fantasy points there. And, um, yeah, Yosevich just didn't help, and Sam Laporta was a bust. That's what really killed it. Other than that, it uh, came through pretty well. So there we go. Thank you very much. Peace out.